Now look at your neighbor and say, you will prophesy. I don't know about you, but I don't need the Ark of the Covenant anymore because it's in me. I am the Ark. You are the Ark that carries the presence of Jesus Christ. And we will see a great awakening like the world has never seen. You hold the key to this country's destiny. Somebody out there, you have a key for them that they need to have you unlock the bondage they are in. Come on, is Jesus good? Is Jesus king? Ah, I love it. I know that you will be deposited something in your spirit that you can take with you to your families. You can take with you to the, the atmospheres that you are around. You'll be able to change things that you never thought you would be able to change because the glory of God has come upon you in such a dynamic way. Hallelujah. Come on, is Jesus good? Is Jesus king? Ah, I love it. Also, I want to do this really quick. Let's, uh, let's, let's say these words. Can we say the words prophesy? prophesy. Can you say it again? Prophesy. Now look at your neighbor and say, you will prophesy. You will. And look at your other neighbor and say, because God said so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do we have some prophets in the house? Do we have some prophetic people in the house? Because this is a prophetic atmosphere. Ah, you can get activated in anything in this place. Hallelujah. The title really fast, Are You Listening? So I want to teach a little bit. It's a quick one, so hang tight. In these last days, God is speaking louder. Can somebody say louder? louder. All right, I might need some help today. To his people than he ever has before. You know, before I go any further, you know in the Bible it said that the prophets of old look forward to what we're living in now. That, that provoked me. I was like... The prophets that we read about that did mighty signs and wonders split the Red Sea, Moses, caught fire from heaven, Elijah, you know, threw an axe in the water and the water split. You know what I'm saying? Like crazy stuff filled barrels of, uh, with uh, oil and, you know, it's just, it's just mind boggling that they were really looking forward to this where people were so filled with the spirit of the Lord that everybody all over the place started looking like Jesus. Because like it says in Joel 2.28 and Acts 2, the spirit of the Lord is being poured out on all flesh. And people have a hard time with that. See, we preach the good news so people can realize what has been put on them. N no, y'all didn't catch that. No, no, no. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me get the let me theologically back this up. Did he say pour his spirit out on believers? All flesh. We make the world become aware of the thing they're avoiding. You understand? The Bible says he reigns on the righteous and the unrighteous. Let these people in the world know who's really chasing after them. Let them know when you walk on the scene, not to make you feel cocky, but you are the one who carries the feet that make the ground holy because you carry the Holy One on the inside of you. I don't know about you, but I don't need the Ark of the Covenant anymore because it's in me. Hallelujah. I am the Ark. You are the Ark that carries the presence of Jesus Christ. So if the Ark was in Obed-Edom's house and blessing everybody, then when you go in somebody's house, they should become blessed too. That's just something to think about. How fruitful is your life? What happens to things when you step on the scene? Now, I say you but I mean the Christ in you. So don't get it twisted. But when you come with Christ on the scene, is things really changing? Are people drawn to what you carry? Because that's what we need, is people that can draw all men unto God. Amen? Not to themselves, but unto God. If that's the intention, God has no, no problem trusting people to be around you. Favor with God is favor with man. Not favor with man, favor with God. Don't get it twisted. Favor with God is favor with man. That means you're so in love with God, you could care less of who else is looking at you. Ah, come on. You can get some one-liners from me today. I'm pretty. All right, listen. Are you listening? In these last days, God is speaking louder to his people, his saints, than he has or ever has before. God is wanting his body to hear his voice so his work can go forth in a greater measure, greater works, greater measure. The more people that hear the voice of God. Look, it's great to do healings. It's great to do miracles. It's great for signs and wonders and all that stuff. But you know, the greatest miracles, the greatest signs and wonders are produced 
from the one who produces them. That means you must hear the voice of the one who is the producer. You see? Because, listen, I'm about to give you a revelatory nugget. Faith doesn't necessarily mean that you heard. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God, but we act in faith every day. I can take an unbeliever that has never heard the word and get him to do something by action that is backed up by the word, but he didn't hear the word. They, he heard it from me who had heard the word, and I activated the faith in them. So people can do things. But people actually do things by faith every day. This, even me saying this next word is by faith. Taking the next step is by faith. But after you have caught faith, start to hear more, and you will go further because the one who produces an author's faith is now speaking in a louder measure. Do you get what I'm saying? People say, I can't hear the voice of God. And I'm like, actually, somebody woke you up. I don't know what you think woke you up. You didn't wake yourself up. Grace did. Ah, hallelujah. Grace woke you up. And grace is Jesus. So you're hearing him all the time. That's crazy, isn't it? Oh, so simple, but so amazing. Hey, Amen. I want to increase your depth I want to increase your ability to hear the one who created you. Don't stop at just getting your little headache healings. Go further. And there's nothing wrong with healing a headache. That's awesome by the glory of Je for the glory of Jesus Christ. But there's so much more. Uh, I'm content, but at the same time in the spirit, I get a little uncontent in a good way. I'm content in this world in all things because I know who has saved me. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, I'm ferocious. I am ferocious because I know there's more. Man, if I feel the Spirit moving a certain way, I got to dial into what he's doing. And I prophesied this at Greg Locke's place. I said, deliverance is good, but now the prophetic's going to come give a di deliverance direction. It's been, it's been cleaned, I would say, because now the prophetic isn't just talking about politics. It's actually bringing deliverance into the politics. You see what I'm saying? It's wonderful. The power of God. Ah, there's nothing like it. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me, and I will answer you. Have you called to the Lord and show you great, ah, this is a word for somebody now, and mighty things which you do not know. Why would he say that to Jeremiah? Why would he say that to those people? Why, why? Because there's something you haven't seen that he's going to do. There's something that he's about to do that you have never seen. You've read about maybe. But it's going to blow your carnality out the water. Even today, the things that are going to take place in this place is going to rock you. We are coming into a time now in the body of Christ where the maimed grow their arms and legs back. Seriously. Creative miracles are going to exp it's going to be exponential. It's coming. We have to see it, guys. We have to see it in America. And we need Americans to do it. Why do I say America? Because I have a heart also for America. I go to different countries. I go to different nations. And they all say, we're watching you. If this great, amazing, and I'm not getting political, but I kind of am. This great, amazing country that has stood with Israel. If this place goes down, buckle your seatbelt. Because you're rolling in to the tribulation times. Buckle your seatbelt because the agenda is moving forward. But guess what, church? If you guys will raise up and cut out the nonsense and stop being scared, this country will experience grace and we will see a great awakening like the world has never seen. I don't know about you, but that makes me a little excited. You hold the key to this country's destiny. You hold the key to the revival, to the awakening. I give you these keys. You have the keys, but through Jesus Christ to sin and death. Those keys, you have keys that the Lord has placed in. You have a key to somebody's healing. You have a key to somebody's miracle. You have a key to somebody's deliverance. Somebody out there, you have a key for them that they need to have you unlock the bondage they are in. You have the key. As Pastor Mike said, we're just one Two people. But what happens if 2,000? What happens if 3,000? Do you know a city can change if just 10 people get it? It doesn't take much. Do the multiplication. 10 speaks. 10 turns into 100. 100 turns into 1,000. 1,000 turns into 100,000. 10,000, then 100,000. You get what I'm saying? Some people tell me, I'm so scared to speak. Well, do you know the one who's speaking? Because you would speak. You understand? 
The Bible tells us not to fear the one who can destroy the body. Fear the one who can destroy the soul and the body. Don't care what people think when it comes to the good news of Jesus Christ. I am unashamed of the gospel. Romans 1.16. Because it's the way people get to know my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the good news. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Oh, Jesus, I call on you now and I ask you, and I ask on behalf of these people to show us great and mighty things which we do not know, things that people in America have not seen. Oh, Jesus, I love Smith Wigglesworth. I love Catherine Kuhlman. I love A.A. A. Allen. I love uh, ba Bosworth. I love all those people. Alexander Dowie, William Branham, I love them. But they're gone. But your spirit's still here. So, Jesus... Raise many of them up because we need it now. And show us more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God wants to do great works through his people. He wants to take us higher in this hour. But we must be able to discern his voice. I'm a big advocate for hearing the voice of God. You know, if I didn't hear the voice of God, I wouldn't stand here today because I had well-meaning people tell me to do different things. And I was like, I hear the voice of doubt. I hear the voice of unbelief. I hear the voice of fear coming from well-meaning people. And I would look at them and I would say this. I would say, I hear the voice of God for my life. And I want to respectfully disagree with you. Because if I listen to you, I have, I'm listening to Satan because you speak as a carnal man. So I have to respectfully say, get behind me, Satan. But I love you. You see what I'm saying? Now listen, I'm not talking about correction. You need to be corrected, get corrected. But there is times where the devil will speak through people you think are well-meaning because they have weak moments. That doesn't make them Satan, though, so don't make them Satan. All right, they're not Judas in you, all right? But listen, you have to hear the voice of God for yourself to go where God wants to take you. Because let's say you get in a wilderness place where nobody else is talking. Are you going to go insane or crazy? Are you going to lean on the one who really is trying to get your attention? He wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to your heart. He wants to tell you mysteries. Paul said, I heard things that I can mention to no man. He, wa he wants to tell you deep, deep things that if you told other people, they would think you were a nut job. He wants you to have heavenly encounters that you get so caught up in raptured, you'd see creatures and beings that aren't even existent on this earth. He would show you things in heaven that are unimaginable. You wonder how these people make Pokemon and all that stuff. They're seeing that from somewhere. Something's showing them that so that those demons can have this reality and have a picture for somebody to look at. Did you catch what I'm saying? Now, we don't do that as Christians, but God will show you some things if you know what I mean. Let me tell you all a story about me. There was a man, a good prophet friend of mine. You guys may know who he is. I'm not going to mention names right now because I want to give God glory, but you guys may know him. I sowed the number of grace to him. And after I did that, see, I'm a, I'm a sower because that's, that's a principle, right? You all should be good stewards of your finances and sow to the church. You should sow more to the church than you are to the restaurants around here. But listen, <laughs> some of you got delivered just now. Listen, <laughs> hey, hey, the Starbucks demon gets more money than the church for some of you. Don't worry, I have to repent of drinking it too sometimes. Listen, <laughs> the cold brew's cool. I just got a clip. I'm just playing. Don't y'all put that on there. <laughs> oh, man. I'm loose up here. Sorry, Pastor Mike. You told me to be here. Hey, <laughs> but I'm telling you this for a reason about sowing. The Lord may speak to you to sow certain numbers sometimes. Some people don't let, I look at him trying. No, he will. He does that. So I sowed number of grace. Do you know, as soon as I did that, I had a power surge hit my house. Didn't hit any other house. I said, what in the world? After that, I started walking around and TV started turning on by themselves around me. I thought I had a full-blown poltergeist. I said, this is crazy. And the Lord said, but Daniel, when you sowed that number, didn't you ask for more power? Ah. Not more power for me, more power for his kingdom. Serving will get you more power. Serving will get you more grace. Sowing will get you more grace. Honor will get you more grace. Going low will get you more grace. But I'm telling you, I've experienced some crazy things from being near to the Lord's voice and hearing him being obedient. Sometimes you got to sacrifice to get the greater glory. I'm speaking to somebody in here tonight. 
Somebody today, this morning, I speak a lot more at night, but yeah, I bring light to darkness. Listen, <laughs> listen, the Lord's speaking to somebody. Somebody in here will make a big sacrifice for the grace of God to expand and extend in your life so you can see greater power be you, come from you. Not to lift you up. Don't dare get it twisted. But just because the world needs it, you'll never go wrong as long as your mouth and lips give praise to God. Amen. Amen.